Things are happening. Explosure is going on. <laughs> the enemy is being exposed. The earth is shaken. The heavenlies are quaking. And Jesus is on the throne. And he's making a way where there's just going to seem to be no way. <laughs> you know, he does things that are so phenomenal. And he loves to surprise his children. Everything must associate with staying in position. Because when there's position, there's divine order. Amen? Amen. And that's one of the things that God tests us on all the time. He wants to know what your priorities are. And if he's not the top priority, it's offensive. It's offensive. Does everybody get it? If he's not the top priority, how could the creator of the earth, the one who created me and you, and protect us and rescued us from going to hell, not be the top priority? We'd have to be a plum idiot. Amen? He must be top priority priority in everything. Everything. That's why the psalmist said, I always set the Lord before me. Why? Because I want him top priority. Top priority. See, that's, thing, that's what we call divine order, putting things in priority. It's God, God, God. Amen? Yeah. It's not work, work, work. Amen. <laughs> it's not money, money, money. You can't buy your way into heaven. We can sure buy your way into hell. <laughs> oh, yes. There is things that are going on that's just phenomenal. In Ephesians chapter 6. <laughs> you know, we talked about being the prophetic voice. Amen? Amen. And God wants you to be prophetic voice, speaking those things that are truth. That's why he says that you must be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And, and we must be in spirit and in truth in everything that we do. See, when things get involved in our life, how many of y'all know the enemy can bless you? Just to move you out of position. And, and see, if you're not strong in the Lord, you're not going to know that it's not from God. Amen. Now, the Spirit has brought to my attention the area where getting understanding about being strong in the Lord. One of the things about being strong in the Lord is you don't compromise. Amen. See, when you're strong in the Lord, you don't compromise. You're not complacent and you ain't stinking lazy. You fulfill vows. Strong in the Lord. How do you become strong in the Lord? In the area of becoming strong in the Lord, it takes worship. You must get through. You must break through to where yourself is gone. Being strong in the Lord. And the power of his might and not our own. That's where, again, we relinquish all ownership of ourself. Everything that we own that we believe we own anyways. We relinquish everything. Why? Because if he is priority, then your mission is priority. Jesus came and he said, I don't come to do anything but the Father's will. So he didn't promote himself. He denied himself. He promoted the Father. No, everything. Everything was about fulfilling the mission. Why? Because that was priority. Because he was for the, putting the Father first. See, one, the Lord is your priority. When he is first, your mission is also. Nothing else. Nothing. Because everything else is temporary. We get married, we have children and everything else. It's all temporary. But your mission that you fulfill is sealed for eternity. 
It's written in the book of remembrance. Oh, you, we must fulfill our mission. But people get caught up. So Jesus rescues, frees individuals, frees them from addiction, frees them from other things, but they're still bound to the world. So, you know, it's amazing how many times I, I run into people that are stuck in the 12-step uh, program. And, they, and they all, the first thing I always say, I've been clean and sober for so many years. Big deal. It's not about being clean and sober because you can be clean and sober and still go to hell. You may have your pockets filled with medallions. <laughs> Hopefully you don't fall in any water. Because you're going to sink. They ain't going to rescue you. It's not about how long you've been clean. It's about getting clean by the blood. And once you get clean by the blood, then the Spirit is there. And one of the things the Spirit wants to do is strengthen you. He wants to bring you to another place where you've never gone before. It's like a Star Trek moment. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, glory to God. <laughs> if I start flying around this place, don't worry about it. Glory. How many of y'all got touched tonight? Whew. I'm still getting touched. Phil. Who yeah. In verse 10, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now he begins to explain something. He says you need to put on the whole armor of God that you may what? Be able to what? Stand against the trickeries of the devil. So that's why he's saying, look at, <laughs> be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Why? Because the devil will trick you. So there's a place where you and I must stay maintained. And I'm going to use, of course, the tabernacle again because everything revolves around the tabernacle. The depth of what chamber you live in is essential. Does everybody get it? See, you and I must live in the second chamber and have access to the third chamber. Living in the first chamber should, not, should be a no-no to you. Does everybody get it? And you shouldn't associate with people living in the first chamber unless you're discipling them. Does everybody get it? So you and I should be living in the second chamber and having access to the third chamber because that's where that refresh comes. That's where the anointing is released. And when that is released, then there's the prophetic voice, which is released for you and I. Now, you got to understand, in this place where you are strong in the Lord, it is no longer about you. You're no longer living for you. You love your children, you love your wife, you love your spouse, you love, but you're in love with him. Not that you don't love your family. He's still priority. So what you want is everything that he wants for you and everything that he wants for your family. Does everybody get it? Not what your family wants. It's what he wants. I see so many marriages start off. They may start strong and then they drift. One easily gets swayed. It's because they're not strong in the Lord. But when the couple is strong in the Lord, most of the time people get married because they're lusting anyways. And because they're lusting, they get married and they can get married under the hand of God, but they're still unevenly yoked. That's why when you're strong in the Lord, 
There is no compromise. There is no complacency. There is no laziness. And there is no drift or strength. And you're able to endure instead of settling for good, you wait for best. There's a difference. It's amazing. And I see the half of the body so screwed up. Because in the area where, because you become a believer, you think you're strong in the Lord. No, it's a process. It's a process of death. It's a process of denying yourself. It's a process of beginning and living in the second chamber and having access to the third chamber, which is his throne. This is not about us. It's all about him. Being strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then he tells us, he says, listen, why? So you can overcome the enemy. So he doesn't destroy the things that God has given you. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Hello? But against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So that means you and I must be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Being strong in the Lord means being strong in the spirit of God. It means being strong in the spirit of God. Why? So you can stand against the trickery of demonic influence in the land of the living. And also that you may stand against the demonic influence in the realm of the unseen. So he says, put on the whole armor of God. In other words, put on the spirit of truth. Be strong in the spirit. He is the spirit of truth. There's the fruit of righteousness. It's the message of the cross. It's the faith, which is the level of your belief and a connection with Christ. You're to put on the full armor of God, which is the mind of Christ, transforming and converting of your soul. Is everybody okay? You and I are to be declaring the word that is written with your breath. You cannot outthink the devil. He'll kick your butt. Amen. And praying in tongues. All of this is the seven parts of the armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your own. That means be strong in the spirit. In 1 Peter chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. There's a lot of people that say they know the Lord, but are they strong in the Lord? Yeah, I know the Lord. You do? Then what's that bottle of booze in your hand? What's that cigarette in your hand? What are those things that you're doing that you know is unclean and displeasing to God? How, can you be, how could you know the Lord? Again, there's an area of knowing, saying that people know the Lord and being strong in the Lord is two different things because only till you are strong in the Lord can you know him. In verse 8, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be what? Sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Devour. It says, resist him. Where? Steadfast. If you are steadfast, are you strong in the Lord? Yes. In the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so everybody goes through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us, did he call you? Did you answer? <laughs> Hopefully he didn't hang up on him. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, by Christ Jesus after you have what? Suffered. Yes, I love suffering. <laughs> A while. Perfect. Establish and do what? Strengthen. So you got to go through sufferings. 
Sufferings means you ain't going to get what you want. You can't always get what you want. But if you trust in him, you get what you need. We're turning that devil song into something righteous. Hallelujah. Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So listen, you ain't the only one going through it when the devil says you are. Amen. Okay, what is the suffering? It's called challenge. It's called training. It's called chastening. It's called testing. And what's it supposed to bring? Perfection. Perfection is known as being strong in the Lord or being strong in the Spirit. To be strengthened, it says. To establish. What does establish associated with? So that you are immovable. Nothing's going to move you. You are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, just like your father. Not changing. Not swaying, not compromising, not man-pleasing, but God-pleasing. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because he wants you to become a trophy. He wants to put you out there, man, and say, this is mine. He's mine. She's mine. Yeah. Don't worry. He's not going to say to Satan, hey, what do you think about my servant? <laughs> <laughs> At least not right now. I don't know. First Corinthians chapter 1. So you can't be a trophy of God if you're not strong in the Lord, can you? Because you'll be tarnished. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Anybody there? <laughs> verse 18, let's speak it. Because what you speak is what you eat. If you speak light, you eat light. How many people are eating too much junk food? Words that are junk food. Verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the what? Power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? And where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are what? Called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your what? Your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not mighty, not many noble are what? Are called. But God has chosen you and me. The foolish. Foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. We are to put the shame to wise in the mighty of the world. That's pretty wild. Our wisdom and strength come from above, 
that is in his presence, in his word, and in his love. It doesn't come from the world. You know, you may be strong physically, but be a wimp spiritually. There's a difference. You can run marathons, but you can't cast out yourself. <laughs> Psalm 51. I know you can't cast out yourself. Sheesh. Boy, did I hear that everywhere. <laughs> Heard your thoughts tonight. Can hear your thoughts. <laughs> Psalm 51, verse 10. Everybody there? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a what? Steadfast spirit within me. That means to be strong in the spirit. A steadfast is one that's strong in the Lord. That's what he's asking for. And renew a steadfast spirit within me so that I am strong in the Lord. And look at, do not cast me away from your presence. Why well, he knows his presence is what makes him strong in the Lord. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Well, hello. He's the carrier of God's presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your what? Generous spirit. Then I will what? Teach. Why? Because you'll be an example. Transgressors, your ways and sinners will be converted to you. Praise God. He wants us to be a sign and wonder. He wants to, look at, sign of wonders, don't grumble and complain. Amen. They trust. To be strong in the Lord says, I trust you. Has everybody got it? There's a complete trust there. It's stronger than any kind of trust that there can be in this world. It is a trust. It's a divine trust. Create a steadfast spirit in me, strong in the Lord. What well, that means, I am dependent. Dependent on your presence and the Holy Spirit to bring me strength. Hebrews 3. Where do you think Samson got his strength from? Amen. The anointing. Although he misused it, didn't he? Then he lost it, didn't he? He got swayed and conned. Fell in the lust, the Farians. <laughs> Hebrews 3, verse 7. Therefore, as the what? Holy Spirit says. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says. See, when God's presence comes, so does his voice. Ah. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. I said, they always go astray in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Why? Because they are not strong in the Lord. Think about all the miracles they saw. I mean, come on. They had food brought to them. They were in the desert. They got thirsty. They stopped, hit a rock, and water came out. And they complained they didn't have any meat. And God sent them, flew it in. Meat showed up with wings. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And he says in verse 11, So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Why? Because in that place there was complete rest. You know that song that we sing about your soul at rest. There's a rest there where you're not anxious. There's no anxiety, there's no anxiousness, and there's no fear. It's, it's now been disqualified to exist in that place. Now it's complete trust. So when things come across your path, you don't have to know everything right then and there. And if you don't know anything, you just exchange it to the Lord, and it will come. You may not know what to do right now, but you will. It's when you make stupid decisions or haste decisions, anxious or fearful decisions or selfish or lustful decisions that puts people out of position. Then their priorities are gone. And he's not number one anymore. You, then you become number one. Amen? And verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while those called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. In this position, in this place where you are strong in the Lord, you take sin very, very, very seriously. Very seriously. It's not a, eh, it's very serious. When you are strong in the Lord, somebody can be cussing next to you and it has no effect on you. Of course, you want to turn around and slap him, slap the hell of him and make room for heaven, right? <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm saying? It doesn't affect you. I had a guy show up to me this morning. I was trying to back out of my driveway. And he showed up, and he's one of my neighbors down there. And uh, I've known him for a while, and he proclaims to be a believer. But, man, he was all angry because somebody burned him on this and that and spent all kinds of money here and this and that and whatever. And, and he was cussing, and I said, okay, Lord, what's up? And, he's, and, the, and the Lord said to me, I'll give you the opportunity let them unload. So he unloaded for a few minutes. I'm looking at my watch. I'm thinking, gosh, I need to get down to the office. You know? <laughs> and uh, finally he stops. He says, you know, I'm thinking about getting an attorney and whatever. Uh, somebody burned him on an automobile, two couple mechanics, whatever. And it was a real simple solution. I said, man, you know what you need to do? I said, first of all, I know guys that know how to work on the car and so forth. I said, you know. I said, but first, you need to forgive this dude and bless him. And turn it over to the Lord because the Lord is your avenger. And he found, it hit him because he was so caught up in his own anger. I said, let God take care of it. He said, man, you're right. I said, I'm, it's not me who's right, it's God who's right. He's the one that gave us the word. It's his word. It's truth. I, I wanted to, aren't you in his word? Obviously not. And he said to me, well, man, thank you for allowing me to unload on you. <laughs> I said, man, you know what to do. Forgive him and bless him. Turn over to the Lord and God will make a way. He said, thank you so much. I knew why I stopped you this morning. <laughs> Praise God. But you know, in that, in that arena, the enemy was attacking him. I mean, his mind was poof, all over the place, wanting vengeance. They stole from me. They took my money. They lied to me. Me, me, me. You know, the Lord says if you do it unto the little, the little youngest ones, you do it unto him. See, when they do it unto you, they're not doing it unto you. They're doing it unto him. If you're strong in the Lord, you're going to see that. You're going to know, go ahead, do whatever you want. You can't kill something that's dead. 
can't touch this. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Amen. You can't kill something that's dead. In that place where you are strong in the Lord, you're dead. And God is your avenger, not you. Even though your first thought is, ah, you want vengeance, and then you, the Holy Spirit kicks in. You know, you feel that slap in the head. And it's like, gosh, Lord. Because you don't want to offend him, and you don't want to get pushed out of that place and position. Because it's lovely there. It's fun there. And you want to live there. And you don't care. It's a place where the only thing you care about is pleasing him. Not pleasing you. Not trying to prove yourself. Not trying to show off how talented and how great you are. And what you can do for God like he needs anyone. <laughs> It's how dead we are is what pleases God. It says he delights in the death of his saints. <laughs> Ooh, snap it. Are you ready? Verse 14. For we have become partakers of Christ if we what? Hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the what? End. While it is said today if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Let me share something. One of the things the Lord knows, when a person has a thought that comes to them and says, I know this already. It's not whether you know it already, it's whether you're doing it. That, see, that's, that's the test. That's the judgment. I know this. Why are you doing it? Well, uh, I know. There's a lot of people that know a lot of stuff, but they ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. It says, depart from evil, right? Come out from among them. Don't touch them on clean things. Don't be unevenly yoked. So you know what to do, but are you doing it? That's the key. But if you're not strong in the Lord, you're not even going to think about that. You're going to justify, reason, compromise. Well, God knows my heart. Yes, and he's been trying to expose it to you for a while. Oh, hallelujah. Today, if you will hear his voice and not harden your hearts as in rebellion, whoo -hoo. for who having heard rebelled, indeed, was it not all who came out of the world, Egypt, led by Moses, but now you and I have been led out by Jesus? Now with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, who called themselves Christians, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not what? Obey. obey. Can you obey if you're strong in the Lord? Yeah. But you're not going to obey if you're not strong in the Lord. You'll still do your little, you'll still live out of how you feel. Feelings will dictate your decisions, not God's presence. So we see that they could not enter because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Wow. We can be partakers of Christ by resisting rebellion, which is the fruit of a hardened heart, and become strong in the Lord all the way to the end. It is very possible for every one of us. God makes way for it. In Colossians chapter 1. Strong in the Lord. Colossians chapter 1. Have you been spiritually beat up enough? Have you been spiritually conned enough? To where you're finally saying, listen, I need to get strong in the Lord. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, he'll bless you, but he takes it. <laughs> Verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, 
having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, where? In your mind, in your thoughts. By wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you what? If indeed you what? Continue in faith, grounded in what? Steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a what? A minister. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. See, you are a saint. You don't have a halo, and you don't have to be voted. Amen? Hallelujah. Somebody needs to read the Bible in that congregation. But anyways, verse 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this ministry among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we, may pre that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. You and I are to be grounded and steadfast in the spirit and in truth, which is strong in the Lord. This takes divine position by putting things in, again, divine order, which is priorities. What is your priority? What is your priority first thing in the morning? As soon as you get up in the morning, what is your priority? I mean, this is what you, you don't, don't, I'm, I'm not, you, know, you don't have to tell me. I mean, what's your priority? You need to check that out. Every morning we ought to wake up. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Father. Holy Spirit, help me pray. Before I kill somebody. <laughs> You're dependent on them. I need your presence. Then go get your coffee and pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> First John chapter 2. Oh, no, we didn't go to collect. Did we go there? Yeah. yeah. First John chapter 2, sorry. Don't go make yourself this huge breakfast and then go pray. That's feeding the flesh first. Like I said, where's your priority? How many of y'all know God? You know, the words of the word say fast and pray. Not fill yourself and pray. Fast and pray. So when you go pray, your warfare is more sufficient, more targeting if you've not eaten yet. It's more precise. It's more clear. There's more clarity. Food clouds you. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> First John chapter 2, verse 12. But I got to get to work. Then get up earlier. Amen. Show him. Eat on the way. Oh, I pray on the way. Yeah, I know, because you filled your flesh with all the food, and then you pray on the way. That don't work. That's not order. Amen. That's not priority. That's not divine order. You haven't denied yourself at all then. 
Oh, good morning, Lord. <laughs> we'll talk on the way. He says, I want to talk now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You called me, right? Let's talk. Praise God. Verse 12, let's go. Let's speak it. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are what? strong and what and the word of god abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world is what the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of god does what abides forever so he says abiding in the word will help you maintain the strength because you're feeding your spirit now. Strong in the spirit to overcome the wickedness of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Strong in the Lord, Romans 5. Is everybody okay? Strong in the Lord. You're either strong in the Lord or you're strong in the flesh, one or the other. Starting in verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith in this grace, into this grace in which we what? Stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in what? Tribulations. We don't run from them. We glory in them. Knowing that tribulation produces what? Perseverance. What's it doing? Is it making you stronger or weaker? Stronger. And perseverance, character, which is Christ's character. And character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been what? poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we are still without strength, does everybody see it? It was B.C., before Christ in your life. We were a bunch of wimps in the Spirit, even though you went to mediums and tried all of these lucky charms and whatever, you know, and all that worked. Dream catchers and all these demonic things, you know. Soothsayers, tarot cards, Ouija boards, <laughs> yeah. Brought no strength. Just brought demon possession. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, and that's what we were. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still addicts, Christ died for us. While we were still idiots out there, Christ died for us. While we were still serving ourselves and lusting and fornication and lying and cheating and this, this, this. he still died for us. And, he st and that, still, that price still stays for each and every one. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. How many of y'all know the wrath of God is coming? Yeah. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the what? Reconciliation. Wow. Listen, you and I were in the world without strength in the Lord. Just by stepping into the world of Christ, your weakness has now become strength in Christ. Just stepping into his world. Does everybody get it? You and I have now stepped into his world. His world didn't step into us. We stepped into his. Does everybody got it? Philippians 4.
verse 10. Philippians 4, 10. Remember, God chose you. You didn't choose him. But I hope you choose him now. <laughs> Verse 10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be what? Content. Is it because he was strong in the Lord? Yes. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. Yes, all things. I can do all, let's everybody say it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Psalm 15. In verse 1, Psalm 15. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle. Here we go. I love the tabernacle. Second, third chamber. Yes, let's grow for it. No more first chamber. And who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Is this somebody who's strong in the Lord? Yes. Verse 3. He who does not backbite with his tongue nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He swear, he who swears to his own hurt and does not what? Change. And he who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved. Never be moved. And the word says, unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Never be moved. That's being strong in the Lord. Because he's strong in the Lord, he won't be moved. He's obedient unto death. 2 Peter 3. Verse 10. Oh, yes. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be what? Burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. A new heaven and a new earth where only righteousness dwells. Verse 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be, be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And considering that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things which are sometimes, some things are hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own, what? Steadfastness, being led away with the air of the wicked, but grow, everyone say grow, in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to him be glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Many have fallen. 
There are many who have fallen because they are no longer strong in the Lord. But God is faithful. His arms are always open saying, come on, get back, get strong, get strong, get strong. As I, I'll tell you, for a long time I, kept, I would hear the word of the Lord come to me and say, fortify, fortify, fortify. That means protect, get strong, fortify. 1 John chapter 5. Many have fallen into their own strength and not the strength of the Lord. Again, because priorities fall out of order. If your only purpose is to work and make money and have a family, then you're out of order. Your purpose should be the mission. I want to fulfill the mission. Does everybody get it? Lord, what is my mission? I want to fulfill the mission. Does everybody get it? That should be priority, the mission. Verse 1. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Doesn't mean you can't do it without a spouse. Does everybody get it? But you better make sure that her first priority is to fulfill the mission. Of course, with God. That person must be in love with God, a non-compromiser. Does everybody get it? That person must be strong in the Lord. Not a whiner, complainer, or vain. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, let's speak it. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Now, I'm not talking about his ten commandments. Everybody got this? His commandments are his, his voice every day. What he ever is asking you to do. The ten commandments are automatically in your spirit. They're already in you. That is just a guideline. That's what the Old Testament used to expose evil. But now you and I have the Holy Spirit to convict us of evil. Amen. Amen. So now it's the area to where you and I are listening to his voice and the commands he's asking you to do. That's why you go to him, Lord, what do you want me to do today? How can I please you today? Show me. Please unfold your will. Open the doors that are you. Shut the doors. I want to do whatever you want me to do. And keep me strong in you. Keep me hidden in the secret place with you. Cover me with your wings. Feed me from your throne room. Man, I could go on forever. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 4. They're not burdensome, are they? Why? Because you're strong in the Lord. It says, verse 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not what? Burdensome. They're not burdensome. Because you're strong in the Lord. You're strong in the Spirit. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You and I are to be overcomers. I'm going to close at Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Strong in the Lord. You know, when you are not strong in the Lord, you do not fulfill what you say you're going to do. That is a fruit. A person that does not fulfill what they say they're going to do is not strong in the Lord. And that means that you can't trust their word because they're not strong in the Lord. But people that are strong in the Lord, their word is vitally important to them because their word is before God. Revelation 12, 10. Let's speak it. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. And they what? 
They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Woe without eternity. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings as of an eagle and she, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for three and a half years from the presence of the serpent. Sounds like us, doesn't it? Yeah, that's when we're taken out of here. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried by the flood. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And a dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring that were left behind. Why were they left behind? Because they compromised. They became complacent. Who, kept the who keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Wow. There's going to be many left behind who do not know. Because they've been thinking. See, in that depth of God's spirit, there's a presence that speaks to you and me. To be strong in the Lord and the power of his might is a place of complete surrender. Trust. 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 Well, you can trust him for everything. Even when things don't look right. Especially when things don't feel right. Whoa. Whoa. So many people live out of emotional state of being instead of a truth. Well, I just don't feel it. Shut up. Get out of the feeling. Get up off your blessed assurance and get into the second and third chamber. And don't feed your flesh first. Feed your spirit. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We want to be strong in the Lord and the power of your might and not our own. We ask, Father, that your word that was imparted in us tonight be protected by the blood of Jesus and possess us. Penetrate every part of our being and members and remind us so we can start afresh tomorrow morning when we get up. Amen. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. That means you agreed. Praise God. See you later.